Welcome back. Well, we'd like to welcome trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris for reaction to the Lori Vallow sentencing. Uh, Misty, thank you so much for hopping on with us. Was this the sentencing you were expecting? I was actually forecasting this sentence previously because there's one factor here that we have to remember, and the judge said it when he went through his rationale for this life sentence without the possibility of parole, and that is concurrent, which means they're served one right after the other. It's the harshest sentence possible. Remember, the judge sat through the entire trial. He heard every second of the evidence. He saw the horrific photographs. He watched Lori Vallow's demeanor. He saw all the evidence be presented. So my feeling was that going into the sentencing hearing, he likely had a pretty good idea of what he was going to do with respect to the murder charges. However, it's it seems that during the course of the victim impact statements uh, and Lori Vallow's statement, which he said showed no remorse, that could have solidified what he anticipated, which was to divvy out the harshest sentence possible to Lori Vallow. I'm not surprised it ended up this way. And as he was going through his rationale, hitting those aggravating factors, it became more solidified in my mind that this was what was going to happen. And you had mentioned on our network uh, that you thought that those victim impact statements uh, were the most powerful you've ever heard in court. What stuck out to you? Uh, what do you believe maybe potentially moved the needle in this case? Something that really stuck out to me between all of these victim impact statements that we heard this morning was just what, what the way this case played out and and every single one of those statements hit that remember that this one jj and and ty lee were missing for a very long time before their bodies were found you have lori and chad and all of this death surrounding this couple and what we really had not heard before while we heard all of the testimony regarding the factual circumstances the statements made all of the lies lori Vello told we heard all of that but we didn't hear about the impact that this had on these individuals who have now lost their loved ones and have a hole in their heart for the rest of their lives and thinking about that trauma not just sitting through the courtroom but the whole process to get there while Lori Vallow is off in Hawaii and while lies are being told about the well-being of the children uh, while Tammy Daybell lies about her the way that she passed away are being told they're reliving this over again at the trial. So that level uh, of, of trauma, it was something that you really felt as those statements were, were being made in the courtroom today. Absolutely. And the judge even saying that those are images with the evidence that he will never be able to get out of his mind. Um, just horrific and, and so sad. As you mentioned as well, we also heard uh, from Lori herself and the judge saying that what she told the courtroom really had no bearing on her sentencing. We have about a minute left, Misty, but what did you glean from some of her statements? Uh, some may categorize them as a bit bizarre. Yeah, I thought they were bizarre, and I was actually pretty surprised that she spoke in such a way in the courtroom. As a defense lawyer, I would have thought less is more if she just had showed some sort of contrition. I almost didn't expect her to do that. Remember, the case is still in the appellate process, but at least to show some sort of remorse for the circumstances of what happened, even if she were going to deny it, I found her statements to almost cut the other way, to say that all of these victims are now happy uh, and their lives were pretty bad on earth and they're pretty good now. To me, that's something that can be incredibly damaging to whatever potential appeals could come down the line. And also, I did not feel that they were, uh, not only did they show no remorse, I felt they dug in much more to the prosecution's theory of the case that she would do anything in furtherance of her relationship with Chad Daybell and her beliefs, including kill her children. So I did not find it to be helpful, although it seems the judge didn't really, it didn't move the needle for him. Yeah. He did say she showed no remorse in the courtroom on that day. Well, it is a horrific story all around. Misty Maris, thank you for your insight and for hopping on with us so quickly. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.